most of the time we all have what we need and we know what we need to do. We just need a motivation and a reason to go do it. Yeah, so good. And that month I did $32,000. This is Stay Paid, a sales and marketing podcast on a mission to help you close more deals and retain more business. Welcome to another episode of Stay Paid. I'm Josh Vestike along with Luke Acri and our guest today in studio. We're about halfway through the interview. We had a great... <laughs> he's looking fly, ladies and gentlemen. You got to go check out the YouTube video for this, this shirt he's wearing. the first time we've had a guest in studio in it like two studio. years. Well, in this studio, absolutely. Wow. Yep. I'm Nate, so used to Zoom. I don't know what to do. I like, I, I'm literally like stiff. I don't know. <laughs> Nate is the uh, founder of Strategic Wealth Accumulation Tactics, better known as SWAT, which teaches an exclusive and proprietary set of skills needed to communicate, negotiate, and relate to individuals and the strategies on how to achieve both time and money freedom in your life. Nate, welcome. Oh, well, thank you for having me. No, that's fantastic. I, I feel special now. It's the first, first time in this studio for two years. This is, no, this is the first guest we've ever, ever. had in the studio. Ever. In you guys studio. just do the studio yesterday? Well, we used, well, we, we, were we used to be in Hawaii. Hawaii. Actually, Waiting we fooled you. you. We told you we've been doing Stay Paid for a while, but this is the first episode, actually. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but we used to be in a closet. We moved from that closet out in like the it. open with COVID, and now we moved to this. It's a little nicer. It's a bigger closet. The studio is nice. It looks yeah, good on, yeah. on film. So we're still in a closet. So I can't say you guys came out of the closet. Exactly. We're still in the closet. We're still, we're yeah, still yeah, there. Well, I, I was telling someone how great, before you go, okay. how good of a sales guy you are, because, you know, during this time, a lot of times we're get headed to Thanksgiving, what, three or four days away. Oh my. And, you know, the biggest objection you start getting at, which I'm sure every career hears is, can we wait until after the holidays, yeah. <laughs> right? Can we, can we wait until after the new first of the year? You know, I was always trained by guys I'm like, yeah, no problem. After the first year, now let's see here. Um, looks like you are going to be number 412 on the list <laughs> for me to call back <laughs> and uh, probably get back to you sometime around April, right? So I was doing a training on Saturday and I said, <clears throat> you know, I said, guys, I'm out of my hotel and I'm doing a, a Zoom meeting for my guys. We do a Saturday call every, every Saturday. I was like, I said, these guys are good, right? I said, they called me up and said, hey, I would love for you to come out and do a podcast. I said, well, I'm busy. It's the holidays, right? I'll do a Zoom. I said, we'd love to have you in person. I'm like, yeah, well, I just, you know, I got a lot of stuff going on. Maybe after the holidays, the same thing that we get, I'm giving them. And then, and I said, I can't remember if it was you or, or who it was. They said, well, I, you're, you're from Philadelphia normally, right? I was like, well, yeah. He's like, you Eagles fan? I go, yeah. It's like, well, we got a presidential suite on the 50 yard line. I said, I am coming to your head in lives. <laughs> the in holidays Israel disappeared. Just I don't yes. know when Thanksgiving is now, right? So, and you but, were like, you're like a kid in a candy shop yesterday, oh my man. God. Yeah, that was like a full circle moment for you because you were saying what? You grew up really poor? Well, yeah. So we grew up um, in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. And I know that I, I believe it's maybe more of a rich area now. But when we were there, there was apple orchards in Cherry Hill, which I still don't figure that one out. But. Um, and my dad w w worked at a mission board association of Baptist for world evangelism. And uh, my mom stayed home. Like they, a lot of moms did back then. And there was, there were six of us. So, um, we grew up, I, I don't like to use the word poor. It's just money was always an issue. Yeah. Every decision that we made was about money. My dad was a pastor. So I understand okay. the feeling. Yeah. yeah. And so he went to a private school, of course, because he got, a, a, you know, either free tuition, discount tuition. And of course we went to, with all the rich kids. So, you know, that really puts you out because, they're showing up in their, you know, IOU sweatshirts. And there's, yeah, you guys are too young for this, right? He might not. And then Z Cavarici. Hey, hey, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. I don't even you know, know what you're talking mom, about my here. My mom just got like the four-year-old gap from the yard sale, oh, that, yeah. you know, the scuffed up stuff. So, you know, I, I grew up, my, my, my family was awesome. Um, my parents were awesome. But like going to the shore and come stopping at McDonald's was like a big deal. Mm. Like that was really, like that was the time we'd go out to eat. Um, and I'll remember when I was, uh, money was such an issue at nine years old, I would go out and eight, nine years old and I'd start shoveling snow. And, and since we lived in a neighborhood that started to grow up where there was a lot of the people that were becoming more wealthy in that neighborhood and we were still the pro, I could go out and hit up a, a, you know, single driveway for 15 bucks, double driveway for $25. I'd be wow. out there all day, come home and bring, you know, bring in 90, a hundred bucks. Good rates. Yeah. And then after church on Sunday, I'd take my family to Red Lobster. Oh, and drop it. I look back going, I can't believe they spent all that Those money. Those little, yeah, like, what are they, the cheddar no, biscuits? The ad oh, Admiral's okay. feast. Okay. Much, yeah, I did get the Admiral feast, right. That was like my $27 <laughs> deal. So, so you know, growing up, <clears throat> you know, I love sports. I played all the sports um, that I possibly physically could. I was a sports fanatic, which still am. Um, and we got to go to a couple of Phillies games, but like, for whatever reason, I guess the football games were just too expensive. Mm. Um, and so I never got to even go to a, a Eagles game. And I'm 46 years old now. So like you made that was your first Eagles uh, game. Yeah, that was the first, first Eagles game. Yeah. In the President's Club. I was in, like, in that's the, yeah. a full circle that's moment. Awesome. Right in the there for you. Yeah, I got a little emotional. I said, told Steve, I said, thanks for uh, making one of my dreams come true. So, and I mean, I could have flown out and gone to my own sure, game. I just yep. never, you know, 
hadn't really need to come back to Philadelphia. <laughs> I say Jersey's a great place to be from, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so then anyway. t- talk to us then about, because right, obviously you've you know made it from being growing up poor, leaving Jersey. You've had a career in sales, really. And now you started this conference SWAT, which mm-hmm. is really what I would say, getting the elite of the elite within the insurance industry right. uh, together, what, 150, 200 plus people in a room, teaching them the tactics to help them really grow their business, be successful. Walk us through what's that about? What is SWAT about? Why did you create it? And then let's talk about what is it that separates the elite? Because you're around them now all the time. Everybody wants to be there. The failure rate's so high. Sure. But why SWAT? Why did you start that? Where'd that come from? Yes, I don't know if I would say I started it. it just, um, you know, I don't know how far back you want to go. But when I was in, in college, I, I, uh, I dropped out twice, got kicked out twice, whatever. We, we, you hear the story, you can decide yourself. But <laughs> either way, we, I went to a private school that had demerits. OK, so, okay. you know, you know, after we were after we had um, quiet hours. We, yes, this was college, you know, quiet hours and a bedtime at 11. And what year did you go to? Oh, I went shoot. to Cedarville College. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm old, right? Um, <clears throat> so anyway. I had a friend of mine drag me down to this meeting, right? And, okay. you know, and I, I showed up at the meeting. It was a network marketing company. Not that that's bad or anything. I knew nothing about it. Um, and they were talking about health and nutrition. And, you know, before health and nutrition was like a big deal. Yeah. They're talking about a water filter that makes 10,000 gallons of water, two cents mm-hmm. a gallon. They said, one day you'll be spending more money on bottled water than gas, a gallon of gas. Everyone's like, ha, ha. The Nevian came out. <laughs> it was more $4 a gallon, you know, for how many ounces, right? Yeah. So I was trying to get out of there, but they strategically placed me where no one, I couldn't leave. Right. And so I'm just sitting there rolling my eyes like, oh, no, I'm not going to sell breast spray and all natural cleaners and environmentally graded shampoos from the rainforest. And all of a sudden they re- wheel this TV in and, you know, I'm dating myself again. We used to have like VHS. Oh, the metal cart. Yeah. 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 Thank you. See, yeah. I VHS? You older. Yeah, VHS. I'm just kidding. I grew up with VHS people. Uh, uh, <laughs> I am young. I'm just not that young. I did grow you up with are also VHS. Young. Yeah. Um, so they wheels in and they start doing all these testimonies. I used to be a preschool teacher. I made millions of dollars. I used to be sell pot and pans door to door. I made millions of dollars. So I'm kind of like going, wow, okay. Because yeah, my people go, money's not everything. Well, when you don't have it, it is everything because you, every decision you make in your life is determined upon money. Mm. You go to a restaurant, you're reading from the right side of the menu instead of left. Because mm. <laughs> you're like, how much does it cost? Yep. Could I even order it? And then this guy got up and, and you know, he's standing in front of a half million dollar car, I guess it would be, you know, which I'd never, I was just like, wow, you know, his arms are crossed. He's like, where are you going to be in the next five years if you keep doing what you've been doing? And where can you be in the next five years if you follow the man that built the path, that built the track to follow? And he's taking other people down that track and they wound up immensely successful. Where would you be if you just did what they did? And that came, it hit home to me because I was like going, why not me? Mm-hmm. If I can follow a guy who built a track to follow and took other people down the track and they wound up, I mean, if we're going to Philadelphia and I get on an airplane that's leaving Dallas to go to Philadelphia and I get a seat and I sit my butt on the seat, I'm going to get to Philadelphia if everyone else gets there. So it made sense to me, right? So I got started a company and I failed miserably, right? Um, the, the person I worked with directly, they were they quit the business probably six months after. And here I am, a lone wolf. At, you know, I was 21. I looked like I was 12. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I went broke. But, you know, I was starting to be learning that, you know, why work for someone else? Why build their dream? You know, you heard a lot of other people that had, you know, rags the richest story. But more importantly, they went through the struggle hmm. to, to get the victory and get the win. Yeah. And like, I know I can do it. And so I was, I mean, there was times I was eight of us living in an air mattress in a really? two bedroom apartment. Because um, we thought like a job was like an STD to us, right? We're like, you, can't, oh you cannot have a job. <laughs> Job just over broke, right? I'm not allowed to say it on here. No, no, no okay. yes. <laughs> this is the uncensored version with Nate. <laughs> but like, you can't have a job. Like, who has a job? Like, if you had a job, you gave up on life if you have mm. a job, right? Mm. Like, you, you're just thrown in the towel. You said, I quit. I'm getting a J-O-B. Um, and, and it was uh, accidentally, and this will come full circle because I didn't really create SWAT. I came up with the name Strategic Wealth Accumulation Tactics. But um, my mentor would put on these events and they put on these trainings, okay. right? And so in the beginning, he would do them all. And he'd bring people in for a two and a half day workshop and just teach the teach you things you never knew that you should know, right? And I know there's books out there, but the things he was teaching, he did. Hmm. So it's one thing, like he always said, you know, if you can't if you can't do it, teach it. If you can't teach it, write a book about it, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> and no offense to those people who actually do it, teach it, and write a book because that's great. But you know, how many people are out there that are so oh, there's so gurus? many man? They're going to teach you how to do something they never did. And they write a book at it and they become bestseller or whatever the case may be. So um, I struggled and struggled because I was getting a lot of watered down information. And that's the biggest thing about any type of training is 
There's someone who knows what they're doing and they go out and they teach it. And then someone hears it once and they're like, oh, I can teach that. Right. And right, it's like, right. like you when you're a little kid, it. you know, when you played Whisper Down the Lane. Yep. And it you're like, oh, my mom and dad yep. have a really nice blue car. And like, it goes around. And by the end of it, he's like, you know. Your mom and dad have a zebra. Yeah. We're going <laughs> to the, we're going to the bar and you're like, you know, with the golf, it's like, what? And everyone's like, ha, ah, it's funny. It's funny unless it comes down to your financial future. Mm -hmm. Then it's not so funny. I mean, try learning. Like if you had a hundred percent of the information and you teach somebody and they're, what do they say? Seven to 10% you retain. Let's say if they're yep. genius like you, Luke, and they get 50, right? And then they teach this person, they get 25, and they get 12, they get six. And you're coming down here learning from the guy with 94% of the wrong information. Yep. I mean, do you want to learn to skydive that way? No. Could you imagine? Would you want to learn how to drive a car that way? But how many people get involved in opportunities and that's how they learn to try to become successful when they're independent? Yeah, so good. So I got a chance to, I accidentally won a contest. And um, I say accidentally because my upline won the contest. They got sick. They couldn't go. And because I was friends with them, they're like, hey, you want to go? Okay. I'm like, yeah. And so I got a chance to hang out with this guy who was making a million dollars a week. Mm. It was back in the 90s when it was cool to make a million dollars a week, right? And show it off, right? Yeah. Jeez. Now you're supposed to make a million dollars a year, give it all away and drive a Prius. It's a different time <laughs> and place. <laughs> However, you know, he, you know, he had, I don't know, 111 uh exotic car collection. He had, a, he had the, the car that uh, Elvis Presley shot a bullet hole throughout in front of his house yeah. in Pantera. He had a Tucker, which was literally only like, I don't know, 50 of them. In, well, they in the got world. you in all. But you went to this conference. What did you, what was it, what did you take away? What is it that changed the game for you? There? Well, what changed the game for me is learning about the Whisper Down the inf Late Information because he was doing all the conferences in the beginning and then yeah. he kind of just started letting all the people he was working with doing, okay. thinking that they were going to teach what he was teaching. Yeah. But a lot of it was watered how down. Do you, how do you spot a fake guru in your mind? Like, you know what I mean? Like, because you're right. Everybody, like, there's so many. Like, what do you do? Like, because there's so many conferences, there's so many influencers. How do you spot a fake guru in your mind? Well, in my mind, what, what have you done? Yeah. And can you teach me to do what you did? Yeah. I mean, anyone can go out there and, and recite, you know, how to win friends, influence people, think and grow rich, yeah, you know, correct. the power of positive thinking, you know, what, you name it. And it all sounds good. Yep. Right. You know, we were talking earlier. It's like, I love the guys who get up there and it's like, well, you know, I, what I do every day, I have a just of five things I do every single day. First thing is, and all of a sudden you see them looking down at their notes. <laughs> what did what, that what, book tell me I was supposed we, to yeah, do? Like, <laughs> what, like if you do five things every day, why would you have to write notes about yeah, it? Like, right, isn't yeah. that what you do every day? Like I get up, I brush my teeth. I have a cup of coffee. Correct, like, yeah. I would know what I do every day. Well, one thing I've noticed, <laughs> and it's what you're touching on, right, is people who have done it, they speak with specifics. Mm. People who have not, mm -hmm. they haven't really done what they're talking about. They speak in principle. And there's nothing wrong with speaking in principle, right? It's, you need the principles. That lays the foundation. If you build something on bad principles, it's going to crack. But people who've done it, there just tends to be, and I've learned this over the years of doing this, mm -hmm. these interviews too, is like there's a sense of just like what I think we talked right before we were coming on of authenticity, but it's really the specifics, like they just naturally just recite out and here's literally what I did, like the number of phone calls I made, or here's right, what I, right. the pitch I gave. And there's like specifics to it versus it's just like memorize a pitch. You know, yeah, it's like, I can tell you I have a great marriage, but if I don't have one, how, what, the, there's, there's principles of how to have a successful relationship. Yeah. But do I deserve to have the ability to teach you how to do it if I've been divorced four times? Well, you know what not to do. <laughs> There is, That's you can't, you can't learn from failure. Oh, there, there okay. Okay, well, great. then what so, do the so elites do, right? Because you're, you're doing this conference of SWAT, right? right. And it's the elites well, that I'm, are I'm getting coming. to that point of how, why I do the conference now yeah. based on the, what, what it is. But to, to your point on there is, you know, find a mentor who's done what you want to do. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. Not one that's going to teach you the principles of how to do what you should do. Do you want to do? I want to go out and be a professional golfer. I'm going to go out and find a mentor who has been successful in the PGA tour if and when I'm able to match up to who can teach me yep. everything about the game, not and how to you, swing the club, the you, mental part of the game, you know, how to go through the whole entire season, how to qualify. I mean, anything and everything I'm going to learn from that person and how many gurus are out there in golf. Mm. But have they, play, have they ever played this tour? Have they ever lasted on the tour? Have they ever placed the top hundred? Have they ever, ever, you know, go through the whole season and, and, and only miss one or two qualifications or qualify every time for the whole year? They haven't. So they don't know what it really takes. Mm. They can swing a golf club. No doubt. And be willing to pay. Be willing to pay. We interviewed Cody right. Askins, actually, strangely enough, because we got connected through Cody. So yep. shout out to Cody, yes, Cody. Uh, for the connection. 
But um, Cody Askins' uh, interview drops today as we're recording this one. Okay. His actually drops yep. live. And he said, and what's really helped him is he was willing to put his money where his mouth was. And he, he wanted to grow his YouTube channel. He went and found somebody and offered to pay them someone who's successfully grown a YouTube channel. So many people don't do that. Be willing to put yourself in the room. Grant Cardone says, like, if you can't afford to be in the room, see if you can serve water. Basically, yeah. see if you can be yes. the, the waiter, the right? Room. Type idea. Get in the room around the people. Be willing to pay for it. Be willing to sacrifice because it can really give you a leap. And that's really what SWAT is. It's going to give you that leap if you're willing to put your money where your mouth is. Yeah, because we're able to take... so. Yeah, I'm able to take the information my mentor taught me for over 20 years. Because I, when I hit, met him at his house, um, I had to fly out there and I followed him around. I was like the pain in the neck person. I guarantee it. We've all had that person. I'm like, what about this? And what about that? What about mm -hmm. this? What about that? And he'd sit down for a drink. Like, well, sir, what would you do in this situation? And what would you do here? Because here's a guy making a million bucks a week after his planes and his $20 million That's yacht and his, his chefs and his three private jets. I mean, he would fill a stadium of 13,000 people at the MGM Grand and they're paying him 1000 to $3,000 a piece to hear him speak wow, just from his company. What was his name? What's that? What was his name? My mentor, yeah. Bill Gould. Bill Gould. Yeah. Okay. Um, and and he, would, uh, he started a company with five agents and took it to $1.8 in less than five years. And they had 35,000% growth on the front cover of Inc. Magazine with Bill Gates, Tom Monahan, the owner of Domino's Pizza, Timberland Shoes. There he was. Five years. Jeez. Selling water filtration, no internet. No social media, yeah. working in offices, running ads. So I got a chance to meet him and I drilled him with questions. The next day it was hilarious because back then we all wore suits. I know things have changed there too, thank God. <laughs> um, and I had my little suit that I bought at Sears, you know, and I had like four different shirts I'd switch out. I have some day, suits and, I've, you know, I bought at yeah. Sears. And, and I walked. Coat factory. Well. <laughs> JC <Yeah>. Penny. <laughs> So I walk in the office and I forgot my shoes. So I'm wearing flip flops. Nice. So I feel like he still remembers this and still gives me a hard time. Um, and he's like, so I hope you guys had a great weekend. Anyone else have any questions besides Nate? Besides Nate. <laughs> and I'm like, great, you know. <laughs> and so when I'm done, I'm like, going, is there a way I can have your pager number? He's like, well, it's like, how much volume did you do? Uh, what's the most volume you've ever done? And, you know, to hit a level of director was like 20,000. The best I ever got was 18,000, like in four years. Mm, okay. I was like, they, I was a supervisor. I call myself a stupid advisor because like I was, I cannot get to the next level. Mm. Never made over 3,000 in a month in the whole entire company. I said, 18,000. He goes, great. If you can do 25 this month, I'll give you my pager number. And he turned around and walked out of the room. I'm just like, but How? I need <laughs> your pager number. He so just I gave you the best advice. Ever, figure though. out how to do 25 grand a month. And that was a life-changing moment because I, what I realized is that we, most of the time we all have what we need and we know what we need to do. We just need a motivation and a reason Ooh. to go do it. Yeah, so good. And that month I did $32,000. So what was the difference? Same product, same comp plan, same no car, same living on my air mattress with, with a bunch of friends. I went from 18 to 25,000 and nothing changed except I had a burning desire to grow rich, right? Yep. To get it done because I needed to have, I wanted his pager number to work with him directly so bad. So good. And I got it and I started to work with him. And, and you can see I get, I get chills thinking about the story because so many people are so close to success and they have all the tools they need to have to get to where they want to go. They just need to have a mentor in their life that's going to push them to get there mm -hmm. and hold them accountable. Like accountability is like rain. Everyone knows they need it, but no one wants it when it's your birthday, <laughs> when it's your kid's soccer game, when it's, you know, your church picnic. Yeah. And so I started working with him and I went from making 3000 a month to over 20000 a month in less than 90 days. Jeez. And I was a millionaire within less than a year and a half. Learning those strategic wealth accumulation tactics. But I got to learn from straight from the, I hate to say the horse's mouth, it seems like sure. you had to find someone, but I got to hear it straight from him. And so I took those skills and every event I got out of network marketing, I got into credit card processing, I built a sales organization, made millions of dollars in that business, um, got out of that business. And I'm not gonna tell you a whole long story how I got drug into, into uh, insurance because <laughs> I really literally got drug into it. <laughs> Um, and I took those same things. I started teaching them to my sales organization and, uh, you know, went from a million in, in APV my first year to 2 million to 4 million to 8 million and mm. just kept growing. And um, I met Co Cody Askins at 8% Nation and I got introduced to Coach Burt through him and I hired him as my coach. I mean, we're sitting there in a meeting. He's talking about prey drive, right? He's like, all right. these people are trying to figure out their why. He's like, I believe you, that your why finds you along the way if you just get start moving. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, thank God I used to sit in those things. Like, they play the music, oh, put down your why. 
I'm like, I, I have no idea why I'm so driven. I have no idea why I don't. I just don't want to be broke. I don't have some like, in, I wasn't married. I'm single. And everyone's like crying. They're writing their why down. I'm just like, I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> like, so am I defective? All these people know the why. I'm having success. They're not. And they know their why. And I have no clue what my why is. And so coach said that I walked right up to my guy. I need you in my life. And I hired him mm. for my coach. Wow. They came to one of my events to speak. And when we were done, I said, so what'd you guys think? And Cody goes, oh, it was awesome, man. It was amazing. And Coach Birch is like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, boy. I'm like, what do you mean? What am I doing? He's like, like what are you doing? I'm like, yeah. like it. He goes, everyone needs us to hear what you just did this last two and a half days. Wow. He's like, why are you not doing this on a larger scale in the insurance industry? And now he's saying it, which is it's true, but my mentor created can be taken on any sale. It's all the same in yep. sales. I'm spending my time doing it in the insurance industry because I use the same skills I'm teaching in the insurance industry to go out and write $15,000 in life premium in mortgage protection my first week in the business and to write $50,000 my first month and $85,000 six weeks during November, December of 2013. So I can come from an area of going, hey, I did this. Let me show you how the skills I'm teaching you can apply to the industry that you're in. So they basically evolved that into um, now where we're doing SWATs on a uh, open, I guess, arena, what you would call it, where it's not just for my sales organization, yeah. but we're teaching these skills and abilities to the entire insurance industry. Dang. Yeah. So, so walk me then through, I know we don't, you can't compress really two days into 15, 20 minutes, no. but can't. walk us through kind of what are some of the top sales tactics or, or principles that you see you have to have one, obviously you have to have that burning desire. That's one. What's the next? Why is it that these elites are separating themselves and doing the majority of the business? How do you write 50,000 in a month? What is, where does that come from? What are the tactics there? Sure. And, and, you know, I was talking to Steve, the owner, great guy, by the way, I love Steve. I, I hope you get a chance to really develop a, a further relationship because he's an incredible guy. But we were talking about in any sales, like he's saying, you guys have warm leads, mm -hmm. right? And I, and so my question was, well, you have someone who went somewhere, filled out information, said, I'm interested in your product. He goes, yes. I said, so what's happening from when they pick up the phone and ink in the deal? Like, what, what, what's falling apart in between there? Because it doesn't make sense to me. And, and he's just like, whoa, wait, wait, wait. He gets all the sales guys because every sales guy hates me there now because they're all like, yeah, who do you guys think he is? I'm like, well, give me some leads on. I'll go in Monday. Give me some leads. I'll call because again, we had leads, right? So I don't know how a lot of people generate referrals and everything else. But like when I got involved in the insurance business, I'm like going, you have a lead? Like someone, <laughs> wait a minute, time out. Like no, time out. Like I would have cut my other ear But that's off. because you come from network marketing where and you're from, literally creating, you're yes. going door to door basically. On, in, in the credit card processing, yeah. we would go door to door to businesses. Yeah. I'm here to talk about credit card processing. I'm not it's, interested. It's I'm all set. I'm with my bank. You're, 20 of you guys came by this week. So you're you're used to getting... You're used to getting the objections. And I was always taught the objection is a roadmap to where to go. So quit freaking out about an objection That's because if they give saying. you an object. My mentor taught me that one. If you're going to Florida and it says Disney World to the right, are you going to get all stressed out? Get out of your car and go, oh my, D Disney World to the right. That's where you're going. There's a sign that says go right. It's like, so why are you freaking out like a little kid? Don't Dude, you I've never to, heard it phrased yeah, that way. That is a Disney great World? phrasing for objections. So you get an objection. Okay, great. There's my roadmap. I'm not interested. Great. Okay, take the exit. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I'm not interested. What aren't you interested in? Isolate the objection. Yep. Is it the product? Is it the service? Is it the time you're like, once you isolate the objection, you get that objection isolated. All you got to do is overcome that objection. Now you have the sale. Yeah. Or in this business, it's so simple. I already know all the objections. I need to think about it. Uh, we're not going to make any decisions tonight. I, I can get all those out of the way, right? Mm -hmm. Ahead of time. But the key in any sales that I was taught was, if I can create a realization in the mind of the buyer that they need what you have, they'll buy whatever you're selling. This bottle of water, this computer, an opportunity, your sales position. My wife bought me, <laughs> that was the best sale of my life, right? <laughs> I created a realization in her mind that she needed what I had and she bought it, right? <laughs> Which is the best sale I had. If you see my wife, you know what? My 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 respect of your salesmanship just rose. I'm just like, how did he know? Well, yeah, you just show up, show a picture. My people go, oh, I don't know, like brought her up on SWAT, right? I said, we're doing, we did what's called millionaire workshop, right? And so I had like my, uh, you know, McLaren parked on the one side and the Bentley parked on the other side, which I don't always do. We're doing a millionaire workshop. So I thought it'd sure. be cool, right? And I said, so if you guys question my sales ability and I walked out with my wife, I was like, there you go. <laughs> look at me, look at her. 
I got something going on, right? <laughs> There's something that I learned to be able to convince this woman to spend the rest of her life with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> with all of this. With all of this. And you don't even know me, right? So creating the realization in the mind of the buyer that they knew what you have, they'll buy whatever you're selling. That's yep. key number one. And it works in any sale if you can do that. And you do that, which again, we can't break it down in two and a half days. There's ways to have a conversation, ask questions, and to find out what is what are they watching on their TV screen? Every prospective client, prospective recruit, their prospective marriage partner, or or, or what do they call it when you date someone, I guess, a prospective uh, goer-outer with you. I guess, I dating. don't know. I've been dating for so long, I forget what they call it. A prospect. <laughs> prospect, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know what they, they call it, right? I don't They're know. all watching some type of movie. Is the movie, is this guy going to screw me over like my last boyfriend did? Is the movie, is is this commission only? Am I going to be stuck where I can't afford to pay my bills each month? Wow. Their movie may be, um, can I trust him? Because the last guy that I, I gave my, my um, emotional uh, stuff to screwed me over hmm. or he tried to hit me at work. So I don't know what movie they're watching. So, so many people come in, they have this loaded gun and they have all the, what they think are bullets. And they're like, here, I got my presentation down. Right. And like three out of 10 die. And they go, sales is a numbers game. Yes. It's not a numbers game. You have your gun. There's no bullets. The bullets you need, the ammunition is in their pockets. The only way I get the ammunition is by asking them questions. And they slowly hand over the ammunition for me to shoot them. You got it. You, I've never, ever heard anybody else explain it. That's the exact way I've taught and explained it to our salespeople, that by the end of your pitch, you should have a loaded gun to literally slay them. And that, I the, mean, it's not probably yep. appropriate to say these days, but well, yeah. that's the truth. It's so funny. Now, sales is a numbers game, though. I have to push back on you there. Okay. All right. It is. Yeah. If you don't go talk to 10 people, you're not going to get 10 sales, obviously. Yeah. But okay, so it's not just a numbers game. Yes. So if I can develop the skills where when I'm doing my presentation, I'm watch, I find out what's on their TV screen so I can figure out what movie they're watching. And then I can be able to ask questions to help change their channel to watch the movie I want them to watch. Love that. Mm. Then they're going to come to me and they're going to need to get involved in my opportunity or my product. So that's key number one. The second thing is how do you deliver information to people in the way that the language that they speak, so to speak, because mm. you know, we talk about different personalities. How do I deliver information? Because like some people listening to this, I'm giving them anxiety. because I talk too fast. I'm too hyped up. Oh my gosh, this guy, they probably already turned it off, right? I understand that. That's why it's, when you do something like this, I can't direct it. But if I'm talking to that individual on a normal basis, yeah. I'm going to be able to, you know, read them, slow down, yep. lower my tone and be able to deliver. So I got taught and there's so many things that are out there, right? And, and, and within 30 seconds, and it, it's a, it's a, um, psychology, not a science, but within less than 30 seconds or less, I can pretty much identify that personality so I can communicate to them in the language that they speak, right? So that they, number one, don't confuse the message with the messenger. Yep. Because that's the biggest problem, hmm. right? Number two, that they can, they can understand it and accept it, but most importantly, implement it and take action. So if I'm going out and I'm talking to 100 people and 25 speak English, 25 speak Spanish, 25 speak Japanese and funny, 25% German. Is that 100? I think I did four. That was four 25s. Uh, that yeah, was, that okay, was 100. good. That's 100. Okay, good. Yeah, that's why I didn't just so well on, my, uh, on the roulette table last We're night. We're good okay. at math, gentlemen. <laughs> and I only speak English. Okay, so let's go back to your numbers yeah, yeah. game. I only speak English. Yep. So I have 100 numbers. I only speak English. What's my chances of closing more than 25%? Not very good. Well, it depends if they, the other people speak in this. Okay. I, 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 I love this guy. Right? Right? So they speak, we'll go through this again. Okay. Right. So 25% <laughs> speak English. 25% speak Spanish. 25% speak Are you sure Japanese they're not bilingual? And German. None of those 75 <laughs> Look, where there's bilingual. a will, there's a way, ladies and okay. gentlemen. So what is your chance, right? If you only speak English and they only 25% speak and understand <laughs> English and they're not bilingual, they have no Google translator, they do not have a translator with them, and they do not have that app that automatically translates. I just right? want to see if you would practice the objections to no. a roadway, you know? So, so this is good. Okay, so, it's 25. Right. So your sign is saying, well, I don't know. <laughs> Here's your sign. <laughs> Who is that? That's comedian? Jeff Fox. Or, Jeff, or the was it, was it, was right? it? was the other Bill. Uh, no, Bill. Yeah, I'm out there trying to, you know, I got a hanger in my car. Trying oh, to Larry get, the cable guy? No, I, no, I, I can't remember. The guy goes, I got a hanger and trying to get, you know, unlock my car. And some lady goes, did you lock your keys in your car? He's like, nope, just hanging my car out to dry. Here's your sign. <laughs> so there we go. So here's your sign, right? So uh, on a serious note, 25%. Yeah. <clears throat> you have a numbers game. You got 100 people here. 
But only 25% speak the same language you do. What's your yep. chance of closing more than 25%? Zero. 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 So if you're the best closer, the most skilled person, you know exactly what to say, what to say, when to say, overcome any objection, you're just like a freaking ninja. And you have 100 people, numbers game, but you only have 25% of the people you can talk to. So I can take somebody who is less skilled, not the greatest at objections, less confident. And if I can teach them to communicate to all 100, they could be as half as good as you at selling and still double the amount of sales you did. Mm. Mm. They could be a 50% closer out of 100 people, get 50 sales. You could be 100% every one you talk to, you knock them dead, yes. and you get 25. They just doubled your production by learning that one skill of how to communicate to the person in the language they speak, not even being half as good as you. How come they don't teach that in school? Yeah, that's so good. Um, so the, the, the art of like building rapport, matching and mirroring, like how do you, in your mind, like tactically do that? Is it like, is it studying personality test? Is it um, listening more than you speak and trying to literally match inflection and match speed of talk? Like <clears throat> what have you seen? You can come to the next SWAT. That, that's, that's hard. To, that's hard. To, I mean, I'm not trying to wrap yeah. them around it. It's, it's an immersion process when you do it. it it's all the above. <laughs> but it's not as difficult as most people think it is. And so what happens, you come there for two and a half days, we'd have the immersion process, you leave it, and basically we implant it into your subconscious mind where you're really not thinking about it because you pretty much already know it, and then that's how obvious it is when you do it because you will actually take, we'll sit down, we'll do the test, we'll break you up to come after lunch in your different yep. quadrants. But what's most effective is that you give, them, you give them a task to do and they all break up in little groups. So you're with your, all your personality yeah, type, yeah. you're with their personality type, they're with their personality type. And he filled in, and then they get up, and they have to stand up and represent their group. And it, it is the most hilarious thing. It's like you have 250, 300 people, right? I mean, break up in little groups of four to five people. And you have team leaders, and they stand up and they say who they are, you know, we're this color, we're the team. And they go through additional likes and dislikes. And literally, Three out of the 10 leaders make the same exact mistake on the same practice. There's eight questions. You guys wrote down two of the same answers for those eight. That's crazy. And three group leaders did it. So you have all, so that's like 40 people of this personality group. And people are just laughing. They're like going, holy cow, this works. Like, how is it possible that you only have to answer eight questions, eight yeah. additional likes and eight additional yeah. dislikes and three out of the 10 group leaders each duplicated one, like, oh, yeah. well, we like to be a life of the party. We like this. We like this. We like to be a life of the party. Oh, I already said that one. <laughs> and it happened three times. <laughs> and so their brain just goes, wow. I said, that's the people you're working with. That's their, per that's how they understanding, do things. Yeah. Understanding <laughs> people, people's personality is so powerful. The Zillow CEO, and he's not anymore, but S Spencer Rascal or whatever. Okay. One of the things he implemented within Zillow as it got bigger is he had everybody take a personality type test and then he put on their desk the color, it was a block mm. of what personality they were. Love so it. as you came up and talked to your peer Love at it. Zillow, you knew this person was a red block, this person was a blue block, this person was yellow block, and it really yep. helped the communication style of people who are more analytical people, who are more passionate yeah. people, right? That type of idea. And it bonded their cor corporate culture together. Phenomenal. That's, yeah. that's, that's brilliant. So if you're building a team, if you're working with motivating people, if you're trying to recruit people, if you're selling, you know, you, so imagine what you just said and imagine I can teach you to visualize that block within less than 30 seconds where you don't have to have the block on their desk. You just know by certain triggers. Yeah. So I walk up, I look at, oh, that's a green block. I need to lower my tonality. I'm have to come to this swap. Oh, you'll love it. We sponsored the last one. We're going to sponsor I, I the next one, well, but I'll have to actually come. Yeah, it's it's in, May. in May, right? 1920, yeah. I think it is. We're doing uh, Mission Possible, nice. which is going to be pretty awesome. So yeah, I don't want people to think it's about me. So what I've done is I, I, I teach these things that I learned from my mentor that are proprietary and I you know I pay licensing fees to use them. I'm fortunate enough to be um, two, there's only two people licensed in the entire country to use that material wow. and I'm one of them. Um, and I actually was kind of talking about full circle. I actually got him to come to my last event. Really? And he spoke. So my mentor wow. actually spoke at the last wow. event and I'm getting him to come back to the next one in May. Yeah, so again, seven to 10%, you know, here, here he is. Here's the guy I learned from. You get to learn from him. And, you know, um, and so I also bring in the top people in the industries like a, a Cody Askins Correct. or a Tony Merwin or a Roger Short and the list goes on. I shouldn't name people, you know, the Camperts and, you know, Rebecca Davis and, you know, Darren. So I put the elite of the elite, you know, Gus Villagran, Ron, Ron Williams, who are in my organization that are in the top of the top and what they do so they can come in and teach what they do. 
So when Pete Fournier went out and wrote over $100,000 in one month of life premium, he's qualified to teach you how to write 20. Right. And if he said, I can go out and produce an extra $100,000 of re- business off just referrals, and he went out and did it more than once, he's qualified to teach you how to do it. If Cody Askins took a company where he was in a squeaky little chair, I always play his first YouTube <laughs> video he ever did. He hates me for it, right? He's like, hi, I'm here to give you the seven reasons why. And he's like, <laughs> on his YouTube, and he hates me for doing that. And he took it and grew it into a company where they're gonna do like $20 million in revenue this year yeah, it's in crazy. five years. He's qualified to teach you how to scale a business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So no one's there reading their notes about the five things I do every day and then looking <laughs> up what they do. They're actually qualified. They do these things and they go, hey, I did this and I'm willing to show you and I make no money off of you. So we create this incredible environment of, of talented, successful individuals and everyone relates to different people. Yeah. You know, I can't be doing it for two and a half days straight. I mean, chocolate cake's great, but too much makes you throw up. Amen to that. You know what I'm saying? So like, no one wants to hear me go on for two and a half days. I don't know how great the material is. So I can come in and do my part. And then the other guys come in and it just, you just leave there. And again, your strategic wealth accumulation tax, you leave there at another level because you have actionable steps, learned skills Mm -hmm. to go out and take in the marketplace to apply immediately to get results. So I've heard incredible things about SWAT. I'm really looking forward to this next one. So speaking of the five things, that you do every day. You know, we ask every successful person, this is oh, no joke, oh, we ask goodness, every yeah. successful person that comes on the podcast. Can you grab my podcast. notes? Uh, where's Anne-Marie? <laughs> my, notes are, my notes are there somewhere. But we ask them, look, you know, when you look back on your life, right, you're very successful. You've implemented a lot of things. What routines or, you know, things that you, you have implemented, do you look back and go, yeah, yeah, that routine has really driven success for me? No, I'm going to throw a, a twist in your mold probably on this one. Okay, let's um, do it. And it was funny because I think I, I um, just heard Ed Milet Love talk Ed. about what I was trained to do. So many people are trained. I'm, I'm, this is the NIV version, the Nate International version of, of Ed Milet <laughs> of what he said. But <laughs> basically, uh, <laughs> so many people focus on what are the things I need to do to have success? And he said, did you ever think, what are the things that I need to get rid of Mm. that are distracting me from getting success? And so I've always focused less on the routine of what I need to do every day. And I always focused on more of what do I need to eliminate out of my life every day? that's not going to distract me from getting to where I want to go. Cause I'm not a big routine guy. I haven't had an alarm for, I I think it's the first time I set my alarm in like six months. I had to get up like seven 30 or something. I was like, I was rough. Those were early risers around here. It's still dark outside. Right. All these guys like, (laughs) I I thought you were going to join me at the gym at 5 a.m. I I was like, where's me? I'm at 4 a.m. And I'm a, you know, but I, I'm just different. I go to bed at three or four in the morning. Okay. I get most of my work done. Like after 11, my brain kicks on. Otherwise I can't, I'm always awake, can't sleep. So I just figured, Hey, if I can do a lot of stuff, no one's bugging me, you know, so you may be up at 4 a.m. I'm up till 4 a.m. You know, so it's just different. Right. And so I just wake up. I wake up, you know, every day, whatever, eight, eight thirty. Whenever, whenever, whenever I wake up, I wake up. I've always done it that way, unless I have to be somewhere or a meeting or something. Um, but like, I, I just take a lot of distractions out. Like back when I was getting mentored, it was TV. Hmm. You know, he said the average person watches eight hours of TV a day. You know, and so it's like, wow. what, what's, what is? And believe it or not, I think they just did a study where social media is still not trumped TV yet. No in terms way. of the amount of time people I guess because of binge watching or something like that. Now, now Netflix, Netflix. Oh yeah. my gosh, yeah. And see, I know I'm not that strong. I'm not that strong, right? Like I went to my kinesiologist, like, and he gives me the news every week, you know, because my mentor used to say, like, what is it? What do you, you turn the news on? What is that gonna do for your life in a positive? Just bring you way? down, jeez. What what real 10 people died in the fire? Like, were you in the fire? Was your family in the fire? I feel bad for you those 10 people, but why do I need to know about the fire? Mm. Like, what's the most positive thing? The weather, maybe? Like, is yeah. it, if it rains tomorrow, you're not going to get up? Mm. I mean, yeah, sure. You have your championship World Series game. You, yeah, you may want to turn on the weather, look on your phone and see what it is. So I, I cut the news out of my life. I just got I got, I got done. Like, I don't, I, there, I'm still alive. And I have no idea what happened yesterday yeah. in the world. No idea. And I'm still alive. You're not missing much. It's, and, really, or, yeah, it's really a crap. So I go to right my now. doctor and he fills me each week. He's like, oh, did you hear about the guy who, you know, was going 150 miles an hour in his Corvette and Las Vegas Boulevard and he crashed in this lady and the car blew up and everything else? I'm human. So guess what I do when I get in the car? I use Google, uh, Raiders player crashed his car. So instead of listening to my personal growth, instead of letting my mind think about what the things I was going to be doing to get done and be more productive, what did I do? I had my phone plugged in with the freaking audio cable. 
going from YouTube to YouTube to YouTube for 30 minutes, drive home in traffic, <laughs> listening to about how this guy from, you know, Rugs, what I think his name was, and hearing know. this commentator's personality that on the, I was like, I just wasted 30 minutes of my life because I'm not that strong. So I can't get on the phone and start scrolling or else I'll be scrolling for days and years and, you know. You don't ever get TikTok. I, I, You'll get lost in no, that. No, I'm good with that. So, like, I pay someone to do my social media and everything else. I know people, people, well, if you have a business, it's worth it. That's great. I get it. I have someone to do that for me because I'm not that strong. So I, I I don't sleep with my phone. You know, I put it out in the in the kitchen. I try to, uh, I think it was Ed Milet or somebody else was saying the same thing. Like, things I got taught, th these successful people do the same thing where, First time I wake up in the morning, the last thing I want to do is check my phone because that's where all the negative crap is going to be. Mm. Oh, we didn't get this, or this person wants to cancel, or here's an opportunity for a conversion for your policy, or oh my God, can you call me, Nate? I got this problem. I can call me. <gasps> like, so I fill myself with personal growth, whatever that is to you, whether it's having devotionals with the Bible, whether it's reading Think Go Rich, whether it's watching the motivational YouTube, or listening to your podcast. Mm. Something is going to get my day started the right way. So I'm in the right frame of mind. So I'm ready to be able to tackle the day. Love that's that. awesome. Right. Love so that's, that. and so I eliminate a lot of that out. Now, I, well, I don't like not ever get on social media, but I keep it very, very limited. And if I do, I'm very intentional about, I'll look at the clock and say, okay, I'm not going to get on here for more than eight minutes. Well, here's a challenge you for know, everybody listening. <laughs> you know how iPhones will send you your screen time? Yep. Oh yeah. 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 What's your screen time right now? And can you cut it in half? That's your challenge, ladies and gentlemen. I like Can that you challenge. do that? There you go. Yeah. So I know the five things. So I, you know, there, there are certain things I do every day, but you know, like I said, I think it's because you hear so many of what, what should I do? What, I love what are that. things eliminate. that you need to yeah. cut out of your life and eliminate that are keeping you from having the dream life or the success you want to have? That's Whatever so that good. is. Don't start Tiger King too. Yes, yeah, so good. Yeah. There you go. I mean, it's what, what are they? And I mean, there's a multiple of things. So I don't really think I have to give them what mine are, you know, but there's a multitude of things and you continue to do that as, as a never ending process. Well, whatever you do, don't cut out the nice shirts. Oh, I would. Right. Yeah. Cause this shirt is freaking that. like, I don't know, man. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> awesome. my wife yeah. All got, right, Nate, before we close shirts. out here, let people know how they can connect with you and how they can register for SWAT. Learn more about it. Um, I have no idea what my face. <laughs> I'll <laughs> help you out. Honest, SWAT we'll training. Tag it, we'll tag it. SWATtraining.info slash register. We'll oh, no, no, it's, it's actually SWAT training. I know what my website is. I don't <laughs> know my social media. It's SWAT, SWATtraining.info forward slash events. Events. So it's right. SWATtraining.info forward slash events, or you can also go to SWATtraining.info forward slash learn more. Yep. Yep. And you can actually hear some testimonials of people that have been there. Love that. I think it's just Nate Offert, N A T E A U F F O R T. I think it's Facebook. I think it's SWAT underscore training or something like that. So I can check. I can post them up. We'll, there. we'll include all the for, links uh, in the show notes for this episode. And, and if I don't message you back or, or whatever you guys do when you get yep. a request, don't get mad at me. I'll eventually get it. Or someone else that will message you back will be like, I would message you back. So if it says something stupid, it wasn't me. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, guys, you're getting I'll, a real Nate here. I'll eventually connect. It just it may not be like that day, that minute. And yeah. don't put a question. I love that, right? They go, hey, how are you? Great to connect. Next. They're like, question mark? Question mark? Question mark? I was like, I'm like, how do I delete this person, number one? Like, what? Like, Just I don't type even, like, delete. Yeah, I don't even know who they are. So I'm like, Roger, can you delete that person? Like, what they do? I said, I don't know. They like, question mark me three times. Like, I'm supposed to respond back to them in like two minutes. I mean, my guy, <laughs> I'll end with this. One of the worst things that ever happened were pagers. Like, I remember when I was in sales, you go to the office, you check your voicemail. Yeah. Right? And then, like, if you're on the road, then they, then you got a pager. It was just like, all of a sudden, now you're like a, a, a dog on a leash. Mm. I paged you three times. I'm like, well, sorry, I didn't have a quarter to stop at the gas station to call you. <laughs> at least you had an excuse, right? <laughs> you had, I didn't have a quarter. You had no of, excuse now, I was out of change, right? You know, and then they put, like, 911, or they could write hello upside down on the pager. Like, those are the cool things. For those I guys truly do me. not get, like, a lot of anxiety in my life. I've been blessed that way. The one thing that gives me anxiety is these Facebook comments. And like every time I get on there and feeling like I saw it, I got to respond to it. I saw it. So it's like you just want to avoid it. It is crazy how that works. Yeah, I'm trying it's to like, say I try to turn off every notification I possibly can unless I have to have it. It's um, like, ugh. But again, some people run their business on it. So if that's the type of person you are and you get all your leads through social media and you have to be on there, then you're using it to generate. To grow your business. business. Yeah. It's great. Agreed. I'm just talking about waste of time things. Yeah. Yeah. So. Agree. Um, yeah. So now like your, your phone owns you now. Now it's like, I emailed you. I texted you. I left you four voicemails. It's like, oh boy. Well guys, I, I have an action item for you. Yeah. Go ahead, Josh. All right, man. <laughs> you can get all of those links we mentioned as well as the video to see Nate's 
Nice shirt that Luke mentioned. Yeah, it's a great man. I love Over it. I've commented State on it three times. Podcast.com. If you enjoyed this episode and want to help out the show, first way is to head on over to Apple Podcasts, leave a five star review along with a comment to let us know what you think. And then the best way is to tell a friend about the episode. If you want to get a hold of me or Luke, you can email us at podcast at remindermedia.com. And of course, you can follow us on Instagram. We are at State Paid Podcast. For this episode of State Paid, I'm Joshua Stike. Guys, I'm Luke Aker. I got two action items for you, right? One is. Look at your screen time on your phone and challenge yourself to cut that in half, right? Because you can be more efficient. You can be more effective, right? On your phone. But the second one is, I really thought it was powerful when Nate shared the story of he had all the tools available to himself to hit over 25,000. And he really just needed that burning desire and that motivation to properly activate his prey drive. You need to ask yourself, what is that burning desire? And remember, it doesn't have to be something that is insanely big right now. It could literally be for the next month, this is where I want to be to be able to get this guy's pager number so I can interact with him and get mentored by him. What is that burning desire? Figure that out, sit down and set that goal for yourself. Remember, the difference between top producers and mediocre producers is top producers take action. Take action on that today. 